Welcome to Candid Conversation number 65. Today we're going to talk about feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit. When I was growing up, I grew up in a Pentecostal church, and it was quite common for us to pray for the Holy Spirit. In fact, that's a good service would be when the Holy Spirit came down, when people moved in the Spirit, spoke in other tongues. Uh, that would be that would be a good service. Uh, a service that wasn't that good was when we didn't have the Holy Spirit. You didn't speak in tongues. And so it was quite common to pray for the Holy Spirit to come down and fill this place, fill us, and fill us with your power, and and show show everybody how great you are by people babbling. Um, well. That's Pentecostal. Other denominations didn't do that. Uh, we went to, we attend gospel concerts back then, do it now too. And it was very, you, know, you go to a Baptist church or a Nazarene church or a Methodist church where there's a concert and you never saw any of that stuff going on. Um, you know, they didn't pray for the Holy Spirit to come down. But now, it's become mainstream. The Baptist will pray for the Holy Spirit to come down. The Methodist, the... I even, yeah, we went to a concert, a Methodist church, and I remember a, an, a member of the church sitting right in front of us, lifting her hands, and just like she was Pentecostal. That was in a Methodist church. And we went to a concert this last Saturday. It was at a, well, it was at a Church of God, but the, one of the groups that sang talked about what the first song they sang, Welcome Holy Spirit, fill us with your power. And that was, a, you know, it's a, it's a gospel group. It's not, and I think most of the members are Baptist, but yet here they are asking for the Holy Spirit to come. Well, the thing is, we're told in Romans 3.28, we're justified by faith, not by works. And then Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Four verses later, we're told the Holy Ghost is given unto us. 1 Thessalonians says we have the Holy Ghost. Um, so... According to scripture for today's dispensation, dispensation of grace, the moment we trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for our sins, we have forgiveness of sins. And Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 says we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. So we have the Holy Spirit given unto us. So if we have the Holy Spirit once we're saved, why are these churches praying? Well, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We want you to come. We want to feel your presence. Fill us in this place today. Why are they praying that when they already have the Holy Spirit? And exactly how will he fill you? You know, even if you had, even if you didn't have the Holy Spirit, uh, how is he going to fill you? And how will you know it? Because when you're saved, we're told we're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. We're told the Holy Ghost is given unto us. You don't feel that happening. I mean, you may feel good inside, but that's because you've been saved. Uh, you know, you, your sins have been washed away, so you may feel good about that. But you don't actually feel the Holy Spirit come into you. And I know the Pentecostals, they'll move in the Spirit, but... Yeah, in other words, if... If that's what happens, if that's... If the Holy Spirit fills you and you move in the Holy Spirit, well then... Why wouldn't that happen all the time? Since I have the Holy Spirit, and I'm sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption, if being filled with the Holy Spirit means that I speak in tongues and I shake about, 
why wouldn't that happen all the time? Why wouldn't I speak in tongues all the time? Why wouldn't I shake about all the time? Now, I know where they get that, you know, the filling with the Spirit. That was in, um, in Acts 2. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with other tongues. There is no scripture reference that tells you that, although there is that speaking in tongues, that one time in Acts 2, uh, when the Holy Ghost came upon them, there is no scripture reference that mentions about being slain in the Spirit or being moving in the Spirit, you know, physically shaking, gyrating like the Pentecostals do. Uh, there's none of that. And there's actually no time where you're told that they are, that they actually feel the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Ghost came to them in Acts chapter 2, it was, it says, cloven tongues of fire came and set upon each one of them. So they could actually see the Holy Ghost come upon them. And that was you know, done because the Jews require a sign and the Holy Ghost had never been given. So they had to, this was a new thing. They had to actually see it happen. We're told at other times they're filled with the Holy Ghost. We're not told that they speak another tongue. Well, there is with Cornelius in Acts 10, yeah. But there's no moving in the Spirit. Um, the, the idea, and, and Calvary Chapel teaches this, they teach that there's actually two fillings of the Holy Ghost. There's the initial feeling when you're saved, and then you get filled a, a second time, and that's the power for service. Uh, but when you do, uh, again, how do they know that takes place? In their teaching, they don't teach that the second filling comes with cloven tongues of fire or speaking in tongues. They just say that you pray for him, he'll come again, and you've got the power for service. There's no physical manifestation of that. So how are you going to know? And there's no biblical basis for that. Uh, I understand that the uh, there's, I think in Acts 4, the disciples prayed for boldness from the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost filled them and they were given boldness. So maybe they used that as a second time. But the thing is, back then, there was no permanent dwelling Holy Spirit. Uh, that didn't come until the dispensation of grace with Paul. So the reason they were filled with the Holy Ghost and he gave them boldness was because they didn't have the Holy Ghost at that time. They received him in Acts 2. Um, he went away from them because it wasn't a permanent dwelling. They're not sealed with him. And so then when they prayed for him later, he came back. So you can't be filled with him twice. You know, there's only one Holy Ghost. And if you, the Holy Ghost is given unto us when we are saved, and we are sealed with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption, that means He never leaves us. So if He's with us, and He never leaves us, there is no possibility for us to feel His presence, for Him to come down on us, we welcome Him to fill us, we're already filled with him. How are, how are you going to get him a second time? He's only, there's only one Holy Ghost. And since we have him and he doesn't leave us because we're sealed with him and he will stay with us until the rapture, according to Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, that how is it that we can get him again? You know, it's just like, it would just like be, for example, me. You know, I, there's only one me. If um, I said, you invited me to your party, and I said, okay, I'll come to your party. And I come, and I'm there. And I'm with you in the room at this party. It's impossible for you to open up the door and have me come in through that door. Because I'm already in the room. I'm already there. There's not two of me. I can't come in a second time because I'm already there. Now, I could leave the building and come back. But if I stay in the room, there's no way that you could open the door and there I would be again, because there's only one of me. And that's the same thing with the Holy Ghost. Now, I understand the Holy Ghost can is God, and so He's omnipresent. So He can be filled, He can be within me, He can be within you, He can be within all believers. But there's still only one of Him. So if He is in me, and He is, because the Bible says, he, won't, he doesn't leave me because I'm sealed with Him. So since He is within me, there is no way 
that I can, if I say, welcome Holy Spirit, fill us with your power, oh, we pray at every, every one of these concerts, whether it's a Church of God, a Methodist, a Baptist, they're all praying for the Holy Spirit to come down and for us to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. He's already with us. So you can't feel him. If, if he's with you and you don't feel him right now, then you're not gonna feel him again. And it's just like, see, that's the thing with the dispensation of grace is it's not about feelings, it's about reality. You know, your feelings may be good or maybe not. You know, I could go to work and I could feel bad and think, oh, I'm gonna get fired. Or I could feel good and think, oh, I'm, um, you know, I'm gonna get a promotion. Well, that may or may not be true. The boss isn't gonna say, oh, well, you feel like you're gonna get fired, so I'm gonna fire you. Or you feel like you're gonna get a promotion, so I'm gonna get a, give you a promotion. The boss gives me things based on reality, what, you know, whatever the boss decides. Um, and my feelings may in, be in line with that, but that doesn't make it reality. The reality, according to God's word, is that when you are saved, he said in Colossians 2, that the things of the Mosaic law, the holy days, the new moons, the Sabbath days, those things were a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. And so since the body has come, We've got the reality here. The Holy Ghost was given temporarily in the first part of Acts because they didn't have the atonement yet. They won't receive the atonement in Israel's program until the second coming. So if they are in the flesh and they are not uh, operating in Christ, the Holy Ghost can leave them. And they gotta pray for him to come again. Old Testament, same thing. There were temporary feelings of the Holy Ghost. They had to have feast days and holy days and Sabbath days because they couldn't be in the presence of God at all times. Us today, though, 1 Corinthians tells us, Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost? 1 Corinthians 3 says we are the temple of God. God dwells within us at all times. The Holy Ghost is given unto us, Romans 5.5, 5, and we are sealed by that Holy Spirit of promise, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, unto and until the day of redemption. So since the reality has come, I have the Holy Spirit, I don't need to fill Him. And the reason I know I have the Holy Spirit is not because I shake in the Spirit or speak in other tongues, it's because God's Word says I have the Holy Spirit. God cannot lie. And so when he says that I have him, then I have him, and I cannot lose him. And so just like, you know, I gave the example of my job. Well, if, if I'm given a promotion, it doesn't matter how I feel. I can feel like I'm gonna get fired. I can feel like I'm gonna get a cut in pay. And then I could pray for the boss to, or ask the boss to give me a promotion. I don't need to do that because he's already given me the promotion. And it doesn't matter how I feel about it, I still have the promotion. And so it's the same thing with the Holy Ghost. There's no need to pray for him. If you pray for the Holy Ghost to fill you, to feel his presence, uh, and that's what all these churches are doing, and not just the Pentecostals, but the Baptists and all the other uh, denominations. That is a prayer of unbelief. Because God says you've already got the Holy Ghost. So you're praying for Him to come. So what happens then? Let's say He, I mean, if that's your mentality, does that mean you only have the Holy Ghost when you're at church? So really, um, you're not secure. You can lose your salvation. And you're not going to, it's impossible for you to uh, live for God outside of church because you don't have the Holy Spirit anymore. 
And so you're not going to obey God. And maybe that's why they think that they feel the presence of the Holy Spirit because Christians today operate just like the unbelievers anyway. So they, maybe that's why. But um, the point is, you know, is he going to leave? If, he's, if you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit and, and the service, is he, when you leave, does that mean you don't have the Holy Spirit anymore? Well, of course not. The Bible says you do have him. The problem, the reason they do this, number one, is they don't know their Bible. I mean, you ask most any Christian of any denomination, um, what is the gospel? In other words, if I was to stand before God and God said, why should I let you into my heaven? What would you say? If that if Christians, no matter how ignorant a Christian is, they need to be able to at least answer that one question. Okay, maybe they don't understand about baptisms or the Lord's Supper or or walking in the Spirit or um, you know maybe they don't understand those things. But in order to be a Christian, by definition, you have to have Christ in you. You know that's the first six letters of the word Christian. Christian is because Christ is in me. That's why I'm called a Christian. They weren't called a Christian before Acts 11 because Christ couldn't be in them because he hadn't died on the cross. It's only after the cross that they can actually be Christians because Christ is in them. They're saved. So how do you get saved? How are you saved from hell? What do you believe in order to be saved from hell? If you don't know the answer to that, you're not really a Christian. But yet, I would say, and I haven't you know, done a formal poll or anything, but I'd say probably at least 90% of all people who attend Christian churches, whatever denominations they are, would give you an incorrect answer to what the gospel is. Most of them think the gospel is everything that Jesus said in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And really, you have to obey that in order to be saved. That's really what's taught. It may not be in a doctrinal statement anywhere, but that's what most people believe. Most people who attend Christian churches believe that. Even if they believe that you're eternally secure and you're, it's a one-time event where you're saved, um, they're still going to introduce other things like, well, you have to make Jesus the Lord of your life, or you have to turn from your sins, or you have to confess your sins, or you have to be water baptized. Uh, they're going to introduce other things other than simply trusting in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone as atonement for their sins. So if they don't know that, if they haven't believed the true gospel, then they're not saved. If they're not saved, they really don't have the Holy Spirit. Uh, so it's you know, logical that they would ask for God to fill them with the Spirit. But the reason they do that, and it's so common, you know, I pray the Holy Spirit will come down and fill this place. I want to fill the presence of the Holy Spirit. The reason they do that, and why it's on all denominations now, is that churches no longer know the truth. They no longer care about the truth. 1 Timothy 4 says, The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they will have itching ears, meaning they want their flesh to be satisfied. They don't care about their soul being saved. They want their flesh to be satisfied. And so then they will heap to themselves teachers who do not teach truth. They will turn the ears into fables, which is stories with a moral to them. And the Bible is not full of fables. The Bible is full of truth. Now there may be stories where you learn morals, but they're not fables. That's not the intent. The tent, intent is for you to grow spiritually. That's the intent of the entire Bible. Um, be saved first and then grow spiritually with the Holy Spirit within you, teaching you the things of God. And so, yeah, that, that's, that's what God wants to happen. So they're not going to be um, this idea about feeling, be feelings. God isn't concerned with that. Again, you, my example, if I've got the promotion... It doesn't matter how I feel about it, whether I feel like I'm going to be fired or I feel like I'm going to get a promotion or I'm going to get a cut in pay or I'm going to stay the same. It doesn't matter what my feelings are about my job. 
the reality is my boss gave me the promotion. And so then I shouldn't be operating at work based upon feelings. You know, I should be operating based upon who I am. I shouldn't say, well, I'm going to keep doing my old job. Well, I shouldn't do that because my boss gave me a promotion. Or I shouldn't say, well, I feel like I'm going to get fired, so I'm not going to work anymore. I'm just going to sit around and wait for it to happen. The reality is I've been given a promotion. I've been given a new job. So I need to do the new job. Instead of me fee trying to feel something, I need to operate in reality. And that's what the Holy Ghost is all about. I've been given the Holy Ghost. I shouldn't ask for Him to come down. I shouldn't want to feel His presence. I already have the Holy Ghost. And so now I need to pray. If I'm going to pray, I need to pray for me to operate in the power of the Holy Ghost. Meaning, not speaking in tongues or moving in the Spirit, but meaning that I allow the Holy Ghost to teach me the things of God so that Christ can live in me. So operate in who you are. But, <coughs> but churches, the reason they don't do that is again, the people, most of them aren't saved. They haven't heard the gospel. And even if they have, they're operating in the flesh. They have those itching ears. They've turned their ears from the truth. So they don't want to hear that I've got the Holy Ghost. Because if I've got the Holy Ghost, well now, I'm going to have to have some effort in dying daily to my flesh, 1 Corinthians 15, 31, and allowing the Spirit to work through me. But if I just ignore all that truth and pray for the Holy Spirit, well then, I don't have to do that. I don't have to deny my flesh. And in fact, I can my flesh can have a great party because now I can feel good and feel the presence of God supposedly, which is just emotion. I mean, last night was the championship football game between Alabama and Georgia. Alabama won in overtime. The people that were Alabama fans felt very good. They were all excited and very, very happy. Um, that doesn't mean they have the Holy Ghost. It just means they feel good. And they could have emotions that are very similar to what people do at church. So they say, oh, the Holy Ghost came down. I felt his presence. No, he didn't, because he's already in you. Or if you don't believe the gospel, he's not in you. And he's not going to come into you until you believe the gospel. And once you believe the gospel, he'll come into you and he's never going to leave you. So um, there's no feeling him at all. It's just truth. It's reality. It's what happens. And But if I feel good, then I have good emotions. You say, well, I feel good. Yeah, so did all the Alabama fans last night when they won the game. doesn't mean they have the Holy Ghost. It's just they felt good in their flesh. And so that's what they're trying to do. They feel good in their flesh. And that way, they don't have to do anything. They don't have to die to the flesh. The flesh can be satisfied. That's why people paid $2,000 a ticket to that game last night. Nothing religious about it. They just wanted to feel good. So people go to church. They ask to feel the presence of the Holy Spirit for Him to come down. They have some good emotions come over them. And they give their money to the church. And that's why the churches do it, because they give the money. But if I get up and say a message that you've already got the Holy Ghost, stop trying to feel Him, and actually you're going to feel pretty bad in the flesh because God wants you to suffer so that your spirit, so that Christ can be strong through you, for when I am weak in the flesh, then Christ is strong through me with His spirit. And so then I'm going to have to deny the flesh. I'm going to beat my body into subjection. I'm going to die daily. I make that message, that doesn't make people feel good. That doesn't make them want to wave $100 bills and throw them in the offering plate. What makes them want to give the money is if they feel good. So, they teach, let's pray for the Holy Spirit to come down. And because people won't endure sound doctrine and they have itching ears and they turn away from their ears from the truth, that's why all denominations now will pray for the Holy Spirit to come down. It's all about feeling so you'll feel good and give them money. If they gave them truth because they won't endure the truth, the sound doctrine, then they're going to stop coming and they won't give the money. So feeling the Holy Spirit, you can't feel Him. But that's okay because you don't need to feel Him. You have Him. Just like I don't need to feel like I'm going to get a promotion at work if I've already been given the promotion. 
I just need to operate in that, in my new job. And that's what we need to do with the Holy Spirit. Operate in who you are in Christ. Recognize the Holy Ghost is given unto you and allow Christ to live through you, dying daily to the flesh. Yeah, you're not going to feel good because your flesh is not going to be satisfied. But your spirit is satisfied by the Holy Ghost teaching you the things of God. You're edified and you're operating, doing God's will.